Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. My name is Lynn Marquardt. I'm your host, and today's date is May 8th, 2015. Can you believe it? I'm so glad you could join me. We are going to have a fun time at Fibercast today making dolls. So, of course, you can make anything fiber related or you can just watch, put your feet up, read a magazine and listen in the background. We're just glad you're here with us because we're a quilting community or a fiber artist community. So, welcome. And I wanted to kick right off and inspire you with a note and a finished project from Evelyn. And I want to read you this note. It's a good reminder of what Fibercast is all about. And first, I want to show you what she has accomplished. Well, no, I'll read you the, the note first. That's a tease. Evelyn sends this in and she titles it, It's amazing what you can do with fat quarters in 60 minutes. She says, I've enjoyed watching you and your Karen, my Karen, hi KB if you're out there, on Friday nights. You are an inspiration. Wanted to share with you what I've been working on during those 60 minutes as we await the birth of our first granddaughter later this month. I had just bought an AccuQuilt Go and with fat quarters in hand started cutting the quilt pattern that came with the machine. Hope I'll read the rest of it in a minute, but I wanted you to show this. I wanted to show you what Evelyn has done. Isn't that wonderful? I love it. I'm going to expand it a little bit. So Evelyn, thank you so much for this note. I was tickled pink. I read it in San Diego when I was out there for work and with my mother earlier this week. And Evelyn did say she is up in Los Angeles. So we flew into LA last yesterday and then flew home to Boston from there. So we were in your neck of the woods. So if we're ever planning, she says, if we're ever planning to take a trip to our town, would love to take you around and show you the sites. Thank you. Looking forward to the doll making time as there will certainly be doll making in my future. Oh, for your grandbaby. And do we know, oh, and we do know it's a granddaughter. Well, again, Evelyn, welcome. It is amazing what we can get done in 60 minutes. Nice, nice, nice. So that's what we do here. We just for 60 minutes now, as I joke, probably 56 minutes, we get together here in the Massachusetts Simply Colorful Studio and we work on whatever strikes our fancy. This isn't a tutorial. This is just us getting together. Always you can post photos of what you're working on to the Simply Colorful Facebook page or to Google or you can send them to me and I still have a long address. It's L for my first name and then my last name is Marquidant at gmail.com L M A R Q U E D A N T at gmail.com and we'll read them on the air. So I said I was going to do a doll and I have lots of little things here. I frankly have not been in front of the machine very much. You can see I still have the wedding quilt behind me but I really like it. It's just so springy. So the couple of different things I have here that I thought we would work on today are the following. First is a few weeks ago, you may remember I was working on the American doll, early American doll, and this is a Gail Wilson kit. And I put her all together and I made her camisole and her pants and her hands and feet are filled with sand and then they were um, rubbed over with some some shellac to make her look old and then she has gesso on top of her so she's actually pretty stiff and I did her hair and it's I think I left a couple of things and I must say if Sarah if you're out there or any of you from the textile tarts I may bring her tomorrow because we have that meeting, but Sarah has looked at her already and given me some pointers that I thought I would play with while we're right here. One is her ponytails, or her braids are just too thick, so I'm going to unbraid them and try and comb out some of her hair, believe it or not, and then rebraid it and make them cleaner and probably shorter. And then maybe if we have time, we might play with giving her some bangs or some hair 
lower on her forehead because right now she looks like she has what was I going to think of? Prestasia? I forget what name it is. Anyway, <laughs> I'll make it sound like a much worse name. She she needs, I think, some more bangs. But, so she's, that's one thing. And then, if the mood strikes us, I took some of this fabric from the old quilt that we used around Christmas time to make some some ornaments with. And I thought she would look really pretty in a dress made out of that. So that's what I want to do for her. So I have that. So that's one thing to keep us busy. And I put her in this chair. She came with a little doll that you may remember. And she also has way too much hair, but I'm going to keep her because it's Pippi Longstocking-ish. And I kind of like the look. And I made her a little dress. And she has underalls, I think. Yep, she does. So she has the underalls. Anyway, so she's there and can be held by the early American doll. So that's not really, we're not really doing too much yet. Then the other things I have that I could pick from, so that's one thing. And in the theory, like Patty has suggested, of us just finishing up things, I really. I'm going to try not to start anything new. I thought I would spend this night in the studio working on finishing up some things. So that's one. Over here, this doesn't need any finishing. This is my Hitty doll, again made with the Gail Wilson kit. I love her kits. They are so well done. And you learn so much by doing them. I also have four Hitty, who has just kind of a, a regular dress on now. I have this form for her other dresses that I made from another kit and I actually stuffed it too much but that's okay it'll still work and I have Hitty's best dress a kit so I might start that and put that after I do our early American finish our early American and actually while I have her out this is another dress I made for Hitty that's been on the form and look at how it just stays so perfectly because it's been on that form for so long with her little hat so so that's something that's a second project that we might get to although I'm thinking maybe not because the third project is one that I think we can do along with this first one and I know I'm doing a lot of talking to begin with but Colleen if you're out there I know I am remiss in getting you a pattern, but I really wanted to test the pattern before I wrote it. And this is a topsy, another topsy-turvy doll, like the one for Karen and family. And Karen has been traveling. I saw a beautiful rainbow, Karen, out in Albuquerque, I think, that, that you took. I hope you're having a great trip, and I hope you're staying away from those storms. Those are some very powerful storms out west. So the topsy-turvy doll... It, I've sewn around, I've drawn her, I sewed with very tiny stitches, now she's ready, I left an opening, she's ready to turn and stuff, and I made four hands. So I thought I would stuff her, and then I literally started making her a purple dress for one side, and a yellow mustard dress for the other side. So she'll be really dramatically different from front and back. So I think that's what I feel like doing next. So I want to turn her and stuff her, and my hemostats aren't close by, so I will use the stuffing forks as double duty. This is very doable with my hands. And I think what's intriguing me about doll making right now is the three-dimensional sculpture of it. So I have my stuffing forks here. These are my Barbara Willis designs. Again, Sarah and others in textile tarts have taught me what little I know about doll making. I have so much to learn. So this is the Barbara Willis fork. It has a fork at the end and it helps with the stuffing. 
but as I say, I'm going to use it double duty and hopefully help, but no, it's going right through. So I just got back from the Relay for Life. It's going on up at the high school right now, every spring. I guess this is its ninth year, and it's the Cancer National Cancer Association's Relay for Life, where the kids form teams, and they literally camp out all night, and someone has to be on the track at all times, representing their team, walking around and raising money for cancer research and to beat this terrible disease. that just morphs and changes and is insidious and we're getting better at understanding it every day but we still have ways to go. Okay, so I'm using my scissors to literally turn that around and this is kind of a a freeform topsy-turvy doll, so it's not like she's a very pristine doll. So you'll notice I, I kind of forgot to clip around her neck, and I think that's okay for what I want her to be. I'm using just a plain Kona cotton peach or flesh-colored the Kona comes in so many colors. Have you guys seen that lately? It's amazing. Another tradition here, in addition to Relay for Life, or not a tradition, but a thing that is happening is everything is in bloom and coming out. Just I'm watching plants grow every day. I have a white bleeding heart that is a foot and a half tall and the, the white hearts are really out already. Okay, so she's turned and now literally, oh, someone's there. Let me pull out some of the stuffing. And literally, with the fork, I twist it around the fork a little bit. And then you just kind of stick it in and place it where you want it to go. And I'm sure there is a lot more science to stuffing, believe it or not, that we'll learn over time so that you get it very smooth. And this is not fancy stuffing, although I, I do believe it came from Bobby. So Bobby, if you're out there, hi. Thinking of you. But it's nice stu nicer stuffing than I've ever had. It's just not wool, merino wolving or something. Roving. Did I say wolving? <laughs> been watching National Geographic. I've been to a zoo. That's why I was saying wolf. I have so much to think of you, to tell you about the zoo. Jean is out there. Hi, Jean. Aw, oh, she says, I'm finally watching you live. Well, hi, you've been a little busy. She says, she's putting the binding on my project from the retreat, made lots of progress on my dirt, but still more to go. Wow, you did make great progress. Check this out. So the top picture is six yards of beautiful loam. And the bottom picture is after Jean has been working on it today. What a beautiful day you had to do that. Oh, thank you. And I can't wait to see your garden this year. What do they say about perennials? The first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year, by the third year, they leap. So... Pretty soon, if not this year, next year, many of those perennials should be doing well. And Chris Myers, if you're out there, hi. I saw Abby at Relay. She said you're, out, you're going to be there very early tomorrow. Yikes. 
You knew that. I was telling other people. Chris has to be there at 4 a.m. for anyone who who doesn't have a have a child doing relay or remembers having to make those sacrifices in the middle of the night. I saw more people. My neighbor, her daughters are up there and she has to go back at midnight to pick them up. As we were driving out, we saw another man whose his wife had to be there from 2 to 6 and then he was going home to get some sleep and then he would get there from 4 till closing tomorrow morning. Hey, KB! That was KB's ding. Or my Karen. Hi, KB. She says, welcome home. So good to see you. Thanks. We're glad to be home. So much to tell you. How did the seat cover come out last week? Did you work on that? And again, Sarah, hi. Textile tarts. Yes, I'm in for tomorrow. Who else is out there? Welcome to Elizabeth, a new subscriber. Carol. Carol says, titled, Carol D, titled Fibercast, just wanted to say hi to everyone that watches on a Friday night. I'm from Hampshire in the UK. By the time you are on, I'm fast asleep. It's about 1 a.m. in the UK right now. So I watch on Saturday, she says. At the moment, I'm working on two heart quilts for my two granddaughters. One is for Emily, Emily, who is two, and Storm, who is seven. Picture attached. Have a good evening. We'll catch up tomorrow. Carol Doherty. Oh, well, hello, and happy Saturday morning. I hope you have coffee in front of you, and I hope that you're excited that we're showing your quilts next. Oh, love this. Oh, isn't that nice? I like that so much. Now, how did you put those hearts on? Are they are they appliqued, hand embroidered? I really like that. Now, hopefully, heart quilts for two granddaughters. I bet you have two of them the same. I just want to make sure I'm not missing one of your pictures. Thanks for writing, Carol. I always love to hear from everyone. As you know, we've been doing, or you may or may not know, we've been doing Fibercast for going on a year and five months. I can't believe how time flies. Aw, oh, Chris says hi. Nice to see you, hi. Time is flying. It's May already. It's just amazing. And I love to know who's out there and what we're doing. And I've noticed, and I think I mentioned this last year, I mean last week, and I think that uh, my sister was the first to, to remind me of this, that the show changes. What we're doing in Fibercast this year is probably different from what we did last year and different from what we'll do next year. So come on for the ride. I'm so glad you're with me and with each other. That's really what, what this is about. And Sharon from Ireland, hi. Also Saturday, I bet. She says, here, hoping to stay awake to catch you live. Well, if you're awake, yay. Being hand quilting most of the evening, so my eyes are ready to close, so wish me luck. I hope you have a lovely weekend, Sharon. Aw. Good luck. And if you're snoozing and this is Saturday morning, that's okay. Sue. Sue Norton from the Midwest, to whom we sent the crushed walnuts. Oh, this is fun. She says the pin cushion is done. Sue, you rock. She says, happy Friday. Here's the completed pin cushion. Thanks again for the walnut shells. She says it's been a long week, and now it's time to unwind with some fiber cast. Oh, and I promised a few test blocks. Aww. Well, first, let, oh, I love that. I love your pin cushion. Is that your pattern? I like it. I like the shape, too. It's kind of narrow and long. Very nice. Okay, now let's look at, let's tap to download. Oh, now these are blocks for your friend. Oh, look at that. Look at how different they look on the screen, even from far away. 
Now when I looked at it closely, it did look busy, but now as I'm looking at it on the screen, on the screen, I can now see the white stars really popping more. What do you guys think? Because I think I saw you mentioning you might put sashing in between or, or flying geese. Isn't it amazing how there are so many combinations? It, it's unlimited. Very cool. What's that dinging? Oh, KB! She sent a picture of the office chair seat over was a fail. <laughs> But I did make a porch swing cushion cover. Way to go. You're so funny. Very nice. You did that? What kind of fabric is it? It looks like it might be heavy duty. I don't know if it's, you can see that. Very nice, KB. This is in, this is a swinging porch um, seat that Karen has in her front overhang porch that's made of brick and it has lots of open areas. It's a lovely place to sit. And she looks out over Pennsylvania fields. In fact, if you look across, you can see an airport, right? A little air landing strip. It's a beautiful view. Hmm. Ah. Well, I'm so glad you're all out there. Keep sending pictures of what you're doing, and let's get working on our dolls. So I'm going to keep stuffing this one. How about I'll stuff this one, then I'll go to a, my American doll's hair. <laughs> oh, who's that? <laughs> Karen says. <laughs> I'm thinking we should try a double Google, Karen, and get you on the line. She says, you always sound so stunned when I finish something. <laughs> I think it's more that I'm stunned when I finish something. So I project that. That's funny. <laughs> it's not stunned. Oh. You do it so fast. I think that's what I'm stunned about. So, how are the lights, by the way? Can you notice anything different about the lighting? I'm curious. Bob has hooked me up. I wish you could see what's in here right now. It's like over there is this new LED square light that is amazing. And he's got two umbrellas over there reflecting light back. Then he's got lights over here. We're doing the, tr he said the three, three point lighting. I said, I don't care what kind of lights you use. Just make me look skinnier. <laughs> To which she probably said something like, I can't work miracles. <laughs> uh, he's such a good doobie. He went up to the Relay for Life park with me, and we walked around a few laps. And his friend Mark, our friend Mark, came with us. And he, our friend Mark, actually had a dunk tank. So he got a couple of balls, and he dunked a teacher. And the kids also have a jail. That's very cute that they can put, they can pay to put their friends into this jail for a period of time. And the infractions are a riot. Now these are these are kids, these are little kids. Like what someone had to go in for 15 minutes because he wore his Tuesday socks on a Monday. <laughs> um of course I can't remember another thing, but they they told them. They were funny. Hey, Chris says the lighting is amazing. Thank you. And you look skinny mini. Well, I don't know about that, but thank you. I'm going to tell Bob that. <laughs> Speaking of skinny mini, I bet you are exercising up a storm. You and Jean are inspired. Will inspire me. Do inspire me in different ways. Not. I haven't gotten to the the food thing. I got myself some new sneakers. They show up on my new sneakers. How's that for colorful? 
<laughs> I love them. They're ASICs. And they're good. Okay, so I'm just filling this guy up, this girl up. And you see how this goes. It's just slow and steady. And you're really sculpting her. This is like, we're going to get this to the stage that Maureen had her do doll at. And Maureen, I'm sorry, I didn't go check out that source for that pattern. I, Again, the Relay for Life kind of caught me by surprise. I wasn't sure I was going to do it, but then really didn't want Bob to go by himself. And his sister was there, his brother was there, um, and his nieces, one of whom is running it. She's a senior. She's Tommy's twin out in Pennsylvania, meaning my sister, I don't know if I ever told people this. So um, my sister and Bob's brother both ended up having children born on the same day, so we call them twins. It was November 2nd. Hmm, send me the, the date. November 2nd, what year? 96? 98? 2002? I don't know. Anyway, they're both seniors in high school, and Mary was running this relay. And it was still light out, so they hadn't done the luminaries yet. I don't know if relay is is big across the country. I think, well, I know in Pennsylvania they do it. It's been around here, like I say, Hopkinton has been doing it for nine years. It's a good thing. And it's fun. Oh, 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 and my goodness. There's a little boy who I just think this is so courageous and so cool. He's a little boy with bright red hair, like the red of these American Girl dolls times 20. And his hair is red, and it's curly, and he's probably four feet tall if he's... You know, so he's, he's a still a little boy. And for the sec at least the second year, we saw him walking in tonight. He wears a big carton on his front, and he says, touch my hair, pay a dollar to touch my hair. And he wears a big can around his neck with that sign. And people do. They will put a dollar in that can to rub his hair. It's just so cute. And talk about creative. It's very cute. All right, so I'm almost done with this. And then you know what I've done sometimes, speaking of handiwork, for Sharon, who's doing her hand quilting, for example, is sometimes I'll do, I'll stuff different parts and I'll leave it open like that. And then I'll just bring all the parts down near near with me when I watch TV. And I'll just sew them up and sew them together. That seems to work really well. Because it does take time, but it's, it's the fun part because then you get to sculpt it a little bit. In fact, maybe we'll play with some needle sculpture on the faces of this, these two dolls. Give them a little bit more than just the flat face. So on, at Textile Tarts tomorrow, hi to Pat or Sue if you're out there or anyone else, we are going to be learning how to paint faces and specific faces of different skin colors. So that will be fun. Okay. So anyway, that's one piece that's stuffed. Let's go. No, really? So there's the topsy turvy. I think I really see how she's not quite. There's some puckers and she's not quite round on either end. So, you know, that might be fun to do together, though, is if I do 
some needle sculpting because it's amazing what happens when you pull the thread through and you use the NIMO beading cord it's kind of like waxed floss tooth floss and you use it and you literally pull in from the back of the head in and you sculpt the nose and when you pull it back you create the nose it pucks out puckers out so let's see let me do one more over here I probably should have puffed those up more, but that's okay. It's okay. Let's see if I can find my NIMO. Getting a big old needle. What are you all working on? Are you working on something? It's a big old thick needle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always take some white here. Tonight, tonight's Fibercast is really just about experimenting. I'm. S I hope that whatever. You know, we've talked in the past about getting into slumps, and they do. For any of us who have been doing this for any amount of time, I hope I hope that you all remember, if anyone out there is in a slump, remember it passes. And something will spark your imagination and you'll be right back at it. And if you're in a slump, try and put yourself into places where that imagination might get sparked. I know that's not very profound, but... So now I'm using a white pencil and I'm going to mark hmm, halfway down the, the head is where the eyes are, right? Halfway is the, is the eye. And then you split the lower half into threes and that will get, that's not working. And that will give us our nose and our mouth. See, so here's the head. Split it in half as your eyes. Then from here to here, split it into threes and you get your nose and your mouth. As a general rule. Who's out there? Hey, Chris says, my BH quilt is on my machine and I started it. I will finish it this weekend. Ooh, cool. Thank you. That's cool. Remember, all over pattern. doesn't have to be fancy. Thank you for doing that for me. Thank you, thank you. I forget what backing we are using that. I don't think it's flannel, is it? I realized that this morning as I was laying under a quilt that we'd made that had flannel backing, I really like the flannel backing. <laughs> Maureen. Hi, Maureen. She says, I have puckers where I don't want them. Ha, ha, ha. In her doll. I hear you. Now, do you have one of these? These stuffing forks are amazing. They come in two sizes. Barbara Willis. Go to her website. They're worth every penny because they have these little tines at the end that help you get into areas that are where you have some puckers. Barbara Willis, W-I-L-L-I-S Designs. Seeing where her... I think I even sent her a check in the mail. She's out in Palo Alto. She's in Mountain View, California.
Did you send a picture? I love that. Puckers where I didn't want them. Well, and you know what else? If you can't get in there with one of these in a little ball, so there are some other tricks, like you can use the needle, like to move the stuffing. So see how I have a pucker here? It's hard to see, I know, but in the side here. So because I've already filled in here, it's going to be hard for me to get my stuffing fork all the way in there. So instead, one trick is to take a needle, pretty sturdy one, and literally go in and try to move the stuffing into where your pucker is. It's amazing how much of the stuffing you actually can move with your needle. Another tip sort of before you get going on something is if you have like a nose or a very very a, a place that you want to protrude you can use tiny little pom-poms and stuff them in there first like in the nose right there put the tiny little pom-pom there and then stuff in around it and that will help so I hope that helps so see I'm kind of I'm using the needle to push the stuffing toward the edge and by doing that, I may actually open up, you know, and if I really, I should, I should and could take some out. But you want to work, work in a little bit at a time over the outside to keep it smooth, if that makes sense, before you fill in the whole thing. Don't we all have puckers? Think of them as... as Wrinkles, right? Okay. I just love to touch it. It's the three dimensionalness of it. Oh. Let's see. Oh, so we were going to try and do some needle sculpting, weren't we? Just for kicks. And because that white pencil doesn't work, we're just going to eyeball it. I took a piece of thread. I double threaded it because it's not like the Nymo. I'm going to go in through the back. And the nose is really what I want to create. And the back is going to be covered with huh, didn't work with hair, so you can show the show show this on the back. I'll show you what I mean. I think. And it takes time. Look at that with just two pulls, how I can start to form the bottom of the nose. Or the two sides of the nose. I'm not sure what I want the nose to look like yet. <laughs> And this might be a case where I need to push some of the fiber in to it. All right, this is going to work. So we're starting to see the form of the nose. <laughs> It's going to work if we were on the prairie without light. Someone's going to look at this doll and say, oh, she made that in the dark. How cute. Uh.
But I'm going to keep going because it's our doll. And it's amazing what we can do with shading with the watercolor pencils. I'll tell you what though, dolls, you have to have a lot of time to make dolls. They don't happen overnight. Like I bet this Hitty doll, I bet I spent four months making her on and off. And that was a kit. One of Bob's clients this week, here's a small world story. Turns out she knows family members and her mother was a quilter and a doll maker. So there my mom and I are out in San Diego and we get a text from Bob who's back home working so that we can go play. Thank you, Bob. And sends me a picture of a doll that is about 12 inches tall, he says. And she's very cute. You see that? Just a little fabric doll. Very sweet. So I was, that was a nice note to get on many levels. He was looking out for dolls for us. And, which brings me to telling you about our trip. We had a nice time. I told, I joked with mom that I'm just going to send her my work schedule and any trip that she's available, she, she's coming with. <laughs> we, um, it turns out that we weren't in downtown San Diego. We were at the Hyatt out at Mission Bay. So for anyone who is familiar with San Diego, you know that that's five miles from downtown about. And it's beautiful and it's on a marina and don't you know within 24 hours of us getting there mom was out deep sea fishing in the Pacific Ocean. And she caught six fish, rockfish I think she called them. She said the sea lions were out there and at a certain point they just stopped feeding altogether. And it was rough. But she did that. She did a ton of walking around the marina. She went up, walked up over the bridge and touched the Pacific Ocean. So every day I would come back from work, she was wearing my Fitbit. One day she walked 18,000 steps. How impressive is that? So... What else did we do? So we got a lot of got to spend a lot of time together in the afternoons. We went to the Midway aircraft carrier and took a tour there. Walked up to the porch and the the flight deck on stairs on literally a ladder that went four at least four levels up. And down, you know, these little stairs that you had to go up and down. So that was neat. It's an old aircraft carrier in the San Diego Bay there. Come to find out, I never knew this, but a woman told us that night, and then our friend Mark here, who worked on a ship, confirmed it too, is many of the naval ships here in America, when they're, when they're done and put out of commission, they're actually brought out and chopped up or blown up and to fortify reefs or fortify different areas in the ocean. Which makes sense. It's sort of the ultimate green um, thing to be reused. I guess as long as it's not leaching something, right? 
Okay, so I'm making a mess of the back of her head, but I am trying to create definition in her face. <laughs> she looks silly right now. You're going to wonder, what am I doing? So literally, that's the back. And then the front is her nose, but it needs to be puffed up a little bit. So somehow, I think the way you want to do it is you want to get un scoop under, and that's what I bet I didn't do. Hang on. I can do this. For those of you who are have really made dolls, you must be laughing at me right now. But if I go down with my needle, underneath where I want her nose to be, and then I go up in the other side, I literally can pull it taut and pull the nose forward. That's what I wasn't doing. So I'm going back down. I gave her definition up and down, but I didn't get the 3D dimensional. You know, and I may find after I do some of this, it may I may find that it might be easier to try carving a doll. That would be fun. There, it's working. The nose is puffing up. So what are you all doing for fire? for Fibercaster for this weekend. I hope that you have spring plans. This is amazing. It's working. I hope you can get out in the dirt like Jean has. They've done studies. It makes you feel better. Now I'm going to go back here. She's got a very little mouth. I find it interesting. I'm going to try not to make dolls that all look the same. Apparently that does happen. And I also am interested, sometimes you tend to make dolls that look like you, which makes sense too because it's what you're, you're, you're known or you know of. So I don't know if you can see that. It's not looking as good as I would have thought. So by now she has a nose and a mouth, very flat mouth, that I'll then paint around. So that's kind of the crease in her mouth. Who's out there? Oh, KB says, this is really neat to see. I've never seen any doll making or sculpting. Had no idea that the faces could be shaped that way. They can. They can, they can. And this is, with bigger faces, you can do a lot more. Um, look up Jill Mass, M-A-A-S, or go to a doll maker's journey and you'll see a whole bunch of art dolls. That um, you can see how how pronounced they can make some of the sculpting. Let's see. So the question is. What do I want to do for her? I think I just want to pull in here for her eyes and then once I use my colored pencils I can always go back. And this is how you can really age 
age your dolls too, right? Give them a few good double chins. <laughs> put easy put 20 years on them. And it tightens everything up. I wonder if this is how plastic surgeons get their start. <laughs> but I'm psyched to hear you say that, KB. So, there are some eyes. Yikes. Again, they're going to think I did that in the dark. But that gives us an idea of that. Now, by next week, I'm going to fill these up and I'll attach them and then maybe what I'll try to do here while we since it's already created let's try making this doll who's out there Jean says, back to the, the garden and all alone, she says, I'm still taking suggestions for my friendship garden if your viewers want to share their favorites. Oh, that's a good idea. So Jean has had her friends give her the name of plants that are her favorites, her perennial garden. What kind of perennials are folks enjoying? And wouldn't it be interesting to see if they're similar in Ireland and the UK as here and I bet we're gonna find their consistencies what at the the latitude of the earth right so what's growing at certain latitudes of the earth will be similar so if we are the same latitude as the UK which I'm not quite sure we're in Massachusetts um, do hollyhocks so I'm thinking of a, an English country garden Hollyhocks. Uh, tell us what roses. Tell us what you what you're growing. Remember we did this last time. I'm going to pucker up the sleeves. Oh, this feels good. I haven't run the machine in a week. So my plan tomorrow is, speaking of gardening, is to get out there early and get up to the, the vegetable garden and plant some more vegetables like, I, I might go for more than, go for quite a few seeds. Um, I've already planted the kale and some spinach, and I'm dying to see if anything's come up. It might be too soon. Oh, my mother brought Bob some kale plants, six of them. So he's growing those out back. So we should be eating. We can have baby kale anytime. Um, but I'll throw in some peas, throw in some. See, I don't want to throw in anything that I won't eat. And we really, we, oh, Swiss chard. I definitely I don't, haven't gotten any of that in the ground. So just like a human being's sleeve, we're going to set this in. Which is why doll clothing really, even though it's small, it can take a fair amount of time to make. But it's worth it. And these are just rudimentary clothes. You should see, some, I've been finding clothes on Pinterest. That thing's amazing. Like couture clothing for Barbie dolls. So we'll just keep doing this. I know this tonight's fiber cast isn't going to be all that showy. We're not going to have a, a nice block to show for it, but I'm going to feel good because I will have made progress on all of these. 
So see, I, I've literally um, eased in that one seam, and I'm going to do the same on this other one. I put my machine at a four to create the gather. And I'm literally sewing it an eighth of an inch off the edge so that when I go to sew the final seam, you won't see this gathering stitch. Now another thing, and maybe next week I'll, I'll be far enough along so that I can show another doll. You can create all sorts of metal armatures around which to build your dolls. So you can create movement in them. You can have them stand and sit and gesture and sky's really the limit. But I just wanted, and it's practice practice, so I just wanted to get us another topsy-turvy under our belt so that I could perfect the pattern for Colleen and get it up on the Simply Colorful website. If you haven't been there, please visit. Actually, no, you don't have to visit the Simply Colorful website. I would love if you like Fibercast I, and you haven't done it already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's www.youtube.com and then it's slash simply colorful, all one word, and then the number one. And if you subscribe to that, then you'll get an email when I have Fibercast and we'll know you're out there. So nice and quiet. Oh, so, okay, let's go back to San Diego. And I know some of you live there, Karen, amongst you, and others and the, whose names escape me right now, but it was lovely to visit your lovely city, and it was a little bit cooler, I guess, than normal, but it was, for me, it was perfect. I think Mom was a little chilly at times. I who get hot all of a sudden, loved it. It was 50s at night, 60s during the day, maybe 40s at night even. And it would be overcast most mornings, but then the sun would come out in the afternoon. Very comfortable. We did a lot of, tra we didn't have a car, so we did a lot of traveling by bus and by train and trolley. And in fact, to get to the zoo from where we were, which was the high at Mission Bay, we had to take four different train trolleys. So we took the eight to the Green Line in Old Town, San Diego, which was really cool. Old Town, San Diego was fun. Then we took the Green Line into Santa Fe Depot, switched over to the Orange Line, took that to City College, then got on the 7 bus and took it to Balboa Park where we saw a rose garden and a cactus garden and the museums, the Botanical Society. We went in there and saw orchids galore. In fact, I should show you a few pictures. And then we went to the zoo on our last day and we saw the flamingos and we took the tram over the top and we took the kangaroo bus around. We saw the pandas. We saw baby monkeys. You should have seen these orchids. I don't know if this will translate well. Isn't that something? That's just one orchid. Lady slipper from the far from the side. And then let's see, let me show. a bird. <laughs> a heron, right? I think. Saw some amazing, they had two aviaries and that was the most fun at the zoo for me was walking through and seeing that. Whoops. 
I didn't remember being in an aviary like that. And then we saw the famous pink flamingos. Ready? I'm going to play a video for you. A video in a video. Get ready. <laughs> Why did I do that? Because I can. How funny is that? They're so pretty, those orange flamingos against that aqua pond was just so pretty. In fact, here's a still that looks just, um, it looks abstract, but isn't that pretty? So we're still reliving that. We had a great time, and um, if anyone has any suggestions for for places they have been or would like to be, send them in. And let me check our email, actually, because maybe you've sent in some ideas for Jean's Garden. Hey, Jennifer. Jennifer in Australia, right, in Perth. She says, good morning, Lynn and everyone. Jennifer Dale, I haven't been able to watch Fibercast live for a couple of weeks as it's 8 a.m. here in Perth when Fibercast starts, and that's Saturday. But I am hoping to be able to join in on time this morning. I've watched all the episodes a couple of hours later. Thank goodness for archives on YouTube. Exactly. I'm glad you could do that. Now we want to see you live. Hi. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the camper van quilt finished. I just love it. Oh, thank you. You know what? It's under this quilt still. So it's still, it hasn't been buried completely, and I will get back to it. I just love it. She says, I will be sewing with my daughter later this morning, which I'm excited about. That really sounds fun. Believe me, when I said goodbye to my mom, that was sad. We'll be working on some bunting banners for a friend's daughter's first birthday party. Something different and should be fun. Very cool. See? That might strike someone's fancy. Bunting banners. Send us pictures of those. Are they literally like banners that you hang on the wall? Because when I first saw bunting, I thought for the side of a crib. I so look forward to my weekly dose of Firecast fun. So thank you for your humor, bright smile, and infectious laugh. Had a, a great weekend, Jennifer in Perth. Aw. You too. Have a great weekend. Oh, and Allison in in um, in Australia also. She says, "Hi, Allison. Morning." She says, "Morning, Lynn. A lovely sunny autumn fall morning here. That's right, because they're down low on the the globe. I'm watching you today, but not sewing." She says, "It's currently 24 centigrade. Not sure what I'll be doing. Maybe finishing some Christmas table runners. I did start them last November, so I guess I should finish them." Huh. Enjoy your weekend, Lynn. Allison. Aw, thanks. You too. Those runners sound great. That's right, you're heading into the seasons, the holidays. So let's see. I think that's everyone. Norma! Hi, Norma! Oh, just wanted to let you know I won't get to watch tonight when you're on. It's date night with the hubby. Oh, happy date night. So I will watch it later. Hope you have a nice weekend. I'm going to enjoy mine out riding the four-wheeler tomorrow. Perfect. Enjoy. Spring is here in the no northern hemisphere. Okay. So why don't I just keep going on this little dress? Ooh. So, Jean, we're not hearing about any perennials, but I'm going to co come over and see your perennial garden this year if I can. I don't think I ever got over last year. You know what I'm interested in is what time of the year your perennials are blooming. Like Sometimes I like to play with that so that I have blooms all throughout the year. 
right now I have some purple miniature iris that only come up like that much. So eight inches maybe. And they don't bloom for very long, but they're very showy this time of year, early on when you just want to see something. And I have plenty of those. I can bring you some of those. Okay. So we have one puckered sleeve for our girl. It's everyone's theory about sewing over pins. It's probably not a good idea, is it? There we go. And do you know what I just realized? We have gone over. My goodness, it's amazing what we can get done in 67 minutes. Well, thank you for, for those of you who have hung in there. Thanks for joining me. Um, you know, maybe we'll spend the next two minutes kind of wrapping up. I can't believe it. I just got carried away with just chit chatting and doing our sewing. Definitely, that means I needed this. So, thanks all for being there. This is the front of my doll dress and once she gets her arms on this will be where her her arms come out and then we'll pucker this up and we'll put that around her <laughs> wow well we didn't get nearly as much done as I thought but at least you saw some of the dolls the hitty the American girl doll her baby doll we're making our to another topsy-turvy and we heard from many of you. I'm so glad that you're out there. Oh, Jean says she'd love some iris. You got it tomorrow. Mine isn't blooming yet. I tried to add stuff each month last summer, so I hope I will get new stuff and have something every month. That's perfect, Jean. These are the earliest bloomers. Oh, great. Well, on that note, everyone get outside, enjoy the weather if you can, start thinking fall and Christmas runners for those of you who are down underneath the sea, and for those of you who have tuned in or are still up in the UK or Ireland, thanks, you get a gold star. Um, keep on being creative, and we'll catch you here next week, next Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fibercast. Bye, everyone.